Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought I would show you a technique of making your own journal cards that are decorative to put in your junk journals. I'm working on a Christmas journal at the moment, so I thought I would show you a technique that you could use. Now you could use these to make actual greeting cards. You don't have to use them just for making journal cards. You could also make smaller journals out of these. I've got a four by four piece of somewhat watercolor paper. It's a little bit thicker cardstock, so white cardstock would be good good the thicker a better for watercoloring because that's what we're going to do on it i have the jumping reindeer i believe that's what this was called and this is from the bow or bow i don't know how you say it b-o-u-g-h however you say that i'm 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 an okie i don't say things right probably and this is one of two stamps and i also have christmas we w-e-e -E, it's tiny tiny christmas and i've got some scraps of paper and we're gonna do some watercoloring so to start with i have this jumping reindeer that i want to stamp in archival ink jet black all right, so I'm going to set this up somewhat in the center, and I want to make sure that he is kind of jumping and stamp that. Now you want to put firm pressure straight down. You don't want to wobble your stamp or you'll get edges around there. So just do up and down straight. Be firm, but don't have to push it super duper hard. And you want to let it rest on your paper for just a moment. Then I took the same stamp and I stepped it onto a piece of copy paper and I fussy cut it out. Then I used the best glue ever and put a little bit on the back side. And what that does, it makes it sticky so that I can use this as a mask. So we're gonna do some masking techniques today. So I've, I've already used it once. So I'm gonna line it up and it's good to go as close to that outer edge as possible. So I'm gonna line him up with my image here and I've got a scrap of paper. We're gonna use the bow stamp with some Distress Oxide Forest Moss. So what I'm going to do is stamp this multiple times all over my page. And I'm okay if it's not perfect because I am gonna do some more stamping on top of this. <clears throat> now that I've got that one done, this is Distress Oxide, so I wanna make sure I hit it with my heat tool so it's dry. I'm grabbing another scrap of paper because the next thing I wanna do is some embossing. I have a Versamark it's a watermark stamp pad. You can use a specialty ink pad that says for embossing. Basically, you want a pigment ink that stays wet enough that it will hold the embossing powder. I've got the holly leaf stamp. And we're gonna ink this up and I'm gonna go around the edge again with the holly leaf. So I will rotate it a few times and stamp it around the edge. Then once I've done that, I will grab, I'm going to take my mask off because I don't need it for this next step. I've got some green embossing powder, so I'm going to sprinkle this over my image and I'll tap it to get off the excess. Okay, so we've got a little bit all over, so I'm going to grab this, put it away, close the lid, and then we're going to use our embossing tool to heat emboss this card. I like to put my card that I'm embossing onto something that is a surface that I don't have to worry about it ruining like my mat that I have in here. In this case, it's a cookie sheet. I put a piece of white paper behind it just so that it wouldn't flash out. And I'll use my heat tool and go around this image, heat embossing, heating up the embossing powder until it melts. You want to keep your embossing gun moving. You don't want to leave it one spot because it can scorch your paper. And it'll also cause the embossing powder to just melt down into the paper. We want it to stay raised. I've mentioned in other videos, whenever you're using embossing powder, you want to make sure that you don't breathe in over it. I don't care what brand embossing powder it is. You can breathe in those particles and they can go up into your sinus cavity. I ended up with a severe sinus infection once because I did a lot of embossing one day. So keep your face away from it. And if you're gonna do a lot, possibly put on a mask to protect your breathing. You don't wanna to touch it right away after you've heat embossed it because it could be really hot. But once it's done, this should be raised. And you should feel a little bit of texture. I'm gonna wipe away some of the excess glitter that's on here. <clears throat> Let's zoom in so you can see this a little better. 
All right, so now we have our reindeer in the middle, and then we have the holly leaves kind of around the edges. So now what I'm going to do, let's do some watercoloring with this. I've got a couple colors of some Derwent watercolor pencils. Mine are really old, so I'll have a link in the description box for a newer version of this. And then I also have some Derwent ink tents pencils as well. So let's do this. I've got one that is flesh pink. So we're going to come in here with the flesh pink and do his nose and then his, I guess you'd call it his mane, and then side of his ear just a little bit. And then I've got burnt sienna. So I'm going to come around and do his antlers in that darker color. And then we'll do his face. And then we'll come down and do his body. I want his belly to be the lighter color. And I'll go ahead and take a darker color. This one is called chocolate. And I'm going to do kind of underneath his belly a little bit here and down his sides. I forgot his tail. We've got to do his tail. I have a little paint palette here. And so what I'm going to do is take copper glow. It's kind of a coppery color. It's got mica in the bottom. So I want to shake this really well. And I will spray a couple of times into my paint palette. And I've got a paintbrush here. So I'm going to come in and grab some of that. And then let's start painting his antlers and down his body. All right, so since I've got <clears throat> most of his body done, I need to do his mane. So I'm going to get candlelight, which is another color from the Merry Little Christmas Tattered Angels paint kit and we'll spray some of that in here and we'll use it to paint his belly and his mane and his face i've got ink black and we'll do his uh, hooves and this time i'll just use water so i'm just going to get my paintbrush wet and then just use water on his feet all right, so we've got our reindeer painted, but I want to go around this outside edge just a little bit. So I'm going to grab the pine colored Tattered Angels and add a little bit to my palette. And we're going to paint in where the leaves kind of form. So just a little bit to kind of indicate that there's some leaves here. And then I want to add little dots where the berries are in that holly. So I've got the Spectrum Noir Sparkle, and I believe this one is Solar Red. And it's a sparkle glitter pen. So I'm just going to touch it where I think the little berries are. All right, we got that pretty much painted. I'll let that dry for a moment. I've got the Merry Christmas We, as I said earlier, it's a small rubber stamp and I've got a little scrap of watercolor white paper and I'm going to ink it up with the archival ink jet black and then stamp this right here on the edge and then we'll take our scissors and cut this and then I have a little strip of red paper that comes in the Merry Little Christmas creative kit it's a subscription box so we'll lay those together <clears throat> and I've got some distress ink here so we'll go around the edges of both these pieces and we'll go around the edge of our card and let's glue these together I'm just using a lean tacky glue and I think this will be kind of cute just putting it right on the bottom here so I'll glue that in place and then there is your journal card now my okay I did good my ink and paint didn't go through the cards it was just thick enough but there is a quick little card that I stamped that you can add to your journal or you can make this into a Christmas card that you give to somebody or this could be the basis for a cover of a journal that you make. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing a quick way to stamp a reindeer journal card.
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, check the description box down below for products that I use. And I would greatly appreciate your support if you like to buy some of these items because that's how I continue to be able to show you these tutorials. I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, so I hope you'll come join me and then check out my other tutorials that I offer. I have a plethora of them. I think I have a little over a thousand videos that you can choose from. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous day. Bye, everybody.